Let's get to our go for this pin cast. We're going to learn to do accounting for loans where the payment is held constant and the principal and interest are allowed to vary. And these, as you'll recall, are the most popular loans because people like to hold payment constant. It's easier to budget around, to budget around. Well, let's do our facts. I'm going to use the same example where you do a three-year loan, 10% interest, because we can all see it and calculating it easily. I'm going to borrow $45,000, and it's our payment that's going to be equal, with principal and interest varying, and a timeline. So we're going to borrow 45000 at the end of each year, make a payment, and after three years, it's going to be a zero balance. I'm going to put you on hold, and... Well, we're going to make an amortization schedule because it's always best to analyze your situation before you start drawing journal entries out. And when you do an amortization schedule, you know what your entries will be for the whole loan. You won't do it as you go and make a mistake somewhere along the way. So hold on, and I'll draw up the schedule. So, we have the headings on. We have our date, our beginning balance, our principal payment, our interest expense portion. The sum of those together will equal the total payment and our ending balance, which will become our beginning balance next time. Let's start with our facts. On 12-31-13, you borrow $45,000 on the last day of the year, so it's our ending balance. There was no beginning balance. That puts us right here on our timeline. On 12-31-14, a year has passed and interest is incurred on every day of that year. So we need to figure out how our payment will be split between principal and interest. Now, I need to give you the total payment. And the total payment, I'm not going to explain how I got I'm just going to give it to you. It's 18000 $95. So I'll put that there. $18,095. So without much ado, we'll just say our principal payment, or our total payment is going to be $18,095. And we're going to hold that constant for all three years. Just going to write that down there to show you. It's not going to change. It's principal and interest that are going to vary. So, let's figure out what interest is. The, beginning, the ending balance for the whole year was 45000 10% of that is going to be 4500 So then, I need to calculate my principal payment. I know the total payment, 18095 I know the principal portion. So you need to subtract the interest from the total payment to tell me what the principal portion is going to be. 18095 minus $4,500 is $13,595. $13,595. And again, that was 18000 which I gave you, minus interest of 4500 which was 10% of the ending balance, or beginning balance. The difference is equal to my principal payment. Now, let's talk about the ending balance. For this year, it will be 45000 minus your principal payment at 13595 Most amortization schedules don't show that being subtracted, but I want you to keep track of what portion of the payment I am applying to principal, and that is the principal portion only. That leaves my loan balance 31405 after the first payment. And it will remain that way all year until it's time to make my next payment. So on 12-31-15, my balance will be the 31405. I will have had that outstanding the whole year times that by 10%, and interest will be 31.40. I'm doing a little rounding here. 
just because I don't want to have a dollar left over in my loan account. But if I did, always plug it to interest. So, where are we? 31.405 times 10% was 31.40. 18,095 minus 3140 gives you a principal payment of 14,950,955. Check the math of that. And you'll find it is in fact 14,955. So what's my new loan balance? 31,405 minus my principal portion this year of 49,955. Taking up a little room there, isn't it? Gives me my new principal balance of 16,450. 16,450. So 12,316. It is 16,000. 450 interest on that will be 10%. 10% 10 of 16,450 is equal to 16,45. And if you subtract that from 18,095, you can come up with your principal portion. And your principal portion is 16,450. Which, look, it's going to exactly pay off this loan. If you end up with a dollar difference, always plug interest expense and make the loan go to zero. Because you just paid $16,450 on it. So, if you look at our first payment, principal was $13,595. If you look at our second payment, principal was $14,595. 955 and if you look at our third payment principal was 16450 and between all of those they took the loan to zero let's take a look at what happened in that notes payable account I have a little room right here let's do it we have notes payable it started at 45 after our first payment of 13595 it went down to 31405 after our next payment of 19 or 14955 that balance went down to 16450 and that's what our last payment took it down by and we amortized it down to zero. So you can see what's happening in the general ledger. And I just used our amortization schedule to make sure that worked. So now that we've done that analyzing, it's time to make the journal entries for this whole sorted affair. On December 31st, 2013, I borrowed some money, $45,000, and I set it up in a notes payable, and you can see that. At the end of the first year, I made a payment, and I can grab my payment right off the line of the amortization schedule that relates to 1231.14. There'll be some principal taken out of the notes payable, some interest expense taken out, and I'll write a check. The cash is being held constant at 18095 and the principal and interest are varying. Principal is 13595 And my first line interest is 4500 And my first line and my payment is 18095. That takes me out to the end of 123114. Let's go out another year. 123115. And that's going to take me to the end of my second payment. Be notes payable, interest expense, and cash. We can grab it right off our amortization schedule. Principal 14955. 
interest, 3140 Total payment, always 18095 That takes us out to the end of the second year. Let's go out to the end of the third year and see it finish off. 12, 31, 16. Our final payment will have some going to the notes payable, some going to interest expense, and some going against cash. 16,450 is the principal portion. 1645 is the interest portion, and 18095 is the cash portion. If you total our columns, you'll notice we did pay off the loan total amortization schedule, $45,000 worth of principal. Interest is 92.85, and if you compare that to equal principal payments, interest is a little higher when you have a constant payment because you're not pulling out a principal as fast. And our total payments are the sum of the two, 54,285. And again, if you compare it to our other loan amortization where we had constant principal, it ended up costing us a little more. One more thing I want to do with you is look at how this would look on the balance sheet. This time I'm not going to do the first year. I'm going to come in and grab it right here at the end of the, uh, the end of the first year, not at the beginning of the loan, which is where we did our last one. And you'll notice we'll have a current liability. And we'll have a long-term liability coming out of this. So our notes payable at the end of our first payment is 31405 The principal portion that will be paid next year is this 14955 So we would say less current of 14,955 gives us a long-term portion of 16,450 and under current liabilities we would show current portion of long-term debt in the amount of fourteen nine fifty five, the principal amount that's due next year. And if you add up fourteen nine fifty five and sixteen four fifty, which you wouldn't do on the balance sheet, but I want to do just to prove to you something, fourteen nine fifty five and sixteen four fifty equals the thirty one four oh five that is shown on our amortization schedule. So we're just showing it on the balance sheet between its current portion and its long-term portion. This wraps up our discussion on notes payable, which includes mortgages and automobile loans and any time you're making installment payments on something. I'm going to move next into bonds payable. Woohoo! We'll let you go for now. See you later. And thanks for joining me on this snowy and icy day. By now it could be summer and warm and you'll laugh when you hear this, but right now it's a situation. See you later.